El escritor antes de nada tiene que ser un buen texto. El niño vive en poesía. Inventar de dónde es que vienen, por ejemplo. No sale a la calle y dice, tiene una pulga más grande que un elefante. ¿Acaso no tiene sentido en el libro? Les explico a los chicos que lo que yo necesito no son musas que bajen, sino una idea. A ustedes les gustan mucho los cuentos, ¿es verdad? ¿Cómo eso lo que hay que convertirse también cuando uno hay un terror? Tienes que buscar esa sorpresa, ¿vale? ¿Vos vas a dibujar también estos sueños? ¡Oigo! Eso sí fue la imaginación. Vino el viento, lo acunó e hizo semilla de nuevo. Esto es Filvita, es como un lugar con un clima lindo. Hola, bienvenidas, bienvenidos. Acabamos de terminar un taller con chicas y chicas en el que compartimos textos de un libro que queremos mucho, que, que valoramos mucho, que es El rey y el mar. Y para seguir disfrutando de la literatura de su autor, ahora vamos a compartir un diálogo con Heiz Janisch y Laura Bittner. Eh, Janisch es austríaco y en este momento nos recibe en su casa, y para acercarse a su obra pueden buscar algunos de sus libros que están traducidos al español, El rey y el mar, que citábamos antes, Cuando Ana tiene miedo, Un hambre de oso. Y lo acompaña en esta ocasión Laura Bittner, que es poeta, escritora, autora de, entre otros, Dime cómo vuelas, Veo, veo, conjeturas de un conejo y Los entusiasmos. Los escucharemos a continuación conversar con la moderación de la editora y especialista en literatura infantil, Virginia Arruano, que además es una amiga de la casa. Este, así que los invitamos y las invitamos a disfrutar de, de esta conversación, que va a ser una alegría y un lujo para este Filvita 10. Agradecemos especialmente a la Embajada de Austria, que nos acompaña en esta actividad. Y las invitamos entonces a tomar la palabra. Vir, te dejo... Eh, te doy el pase y a disfrutarlo. Gracias. Hello, Heinz. I'm very glad to meet you. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Best greetings from Vienna. Hi. Hello, Laura. How are you? Hi, Virginia. Virginia, Virginia. <laughs> We are going to have a conversation in English. It's weird. <laughs> It is. Oh, well. Um, I'm going to start at the beginning, so I would like to ask them my first question. What memories do you have uh, from your childhood, especially with reading, with books, also with oral stories? Laura, would you like to start? Okay, I, I will try. Um, I grew up in a home uh, where reading was sort of shown to us as a very pleasurable experience, activity. There were many books around and we, it was usual to see my parents reading in their free time. Um, it was not some sort of rule or, or expectation for us to read or some educational encouragement. It was just pleasure and my parents used to read to us. My, my father used to read to my sister and I before we went to sleep. Sometimes he used to sing to us too with the guitar in the darkness, which is a very special memory for me. So they didn't, they didn't study literature and they did other things and uh, neither my father nor my mother devoted themselves to literature neither my sister nor my brother ended up writing or studying literature so i must have had a special connection with uh, with books and with language i guess i don't know <laughs> and and then as soon as i began to i i learned how to read and learned to write, I began to do it for pleasure too. And you, Heinz? 
Well, I was uh, born in a little village near the Hungarian uh, border. It was a very little, uh, small village with 20 houses, maybe. And my parents didn't have many books, maybe 10 or 15 books. But was, what was so impressing for me was that my father, even when he was very tired in the evening, he always needed one hour to have with a book. He sat somewhere in the corner and was reading a book. And uh, I was curious, what, what about the books? So I went to a little library and started reading all the books I could find, the yellow one, the, the red one, the blue one, the little one, the big one, all of them in the little room there. And I got very excited about this. And my writing began by reading because when the book was finished, like the fairy tales and then they lived on forever like this, I was thinking, how could the story go on? So I come from the reading to writing in my head. What happens after the marriage of the prince and the princess? What could they do the next day? Are they doing a traveling or go to the cinema or going to, to eat a pizza? I don't know. So I start telling new stories and I showed them to my father. And my father laughed and said, nice story and send it to some newspapers for children. And then they published it sometimes. There was written my story, Heinz, seven years old, Heinz, eight years old. So it was very, very proud. And I put it um, on my wall in my room beside the football players and pop stars and thought, wow, it would be great to be a, a writer, uh, to write books one day. So it started very early by reading in the library, found my own stories to the books I know, and so it went on and then I studied literature in Vienna at the university. And I always tried to find jobs to beside for my studies. So I went to the radio station, I went to newspapers. So now I'm a journalist at day for the radio station and I'm a writer at night. So I have two jobs and I love both of them. Both are touching my heart. Because I have a program on the radio every Sunday since 35 years. It's called oh. Picture of Man. Uh, every Sunday, for an old people, between 60 or 100, is talking about his life. It's remembering a life, life stories. So we have done about thousands of them now, and it's a very great experience. So sometimes in the morning, I go to a school with, with eight years old children. And in the afternoon, I meet a man 80 years old. And so the things come together in some way, the old one and the young one. And I love, I love both of them. Hans, and is it possible to listen to the, some of those radio programs? Are they in the form of they are on the internet. Maybe? Yeah, they're in the internet. Um, it's called Menschen Builder. It means picture of man. You're listening to the people and make your picture in your head. We start with the music at the beginning and at the end, like the, 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 the surrounding of the picture. Ah, of, yes, of course, I'm not going to understand the language. I'm it's just German. realizing yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, have, we have people from Austria, Germany, Switzerland, because we are speaking German, yes. Yeah, the but only it's... one tried in French, and that was terrible, was Eugène Ionesco, a great writer. Yes. And I tried with my school French. And he oh. was surprised when I asked him. So that's the only one. Most of them speak German. But we had a lot of writers, authors, but, but also very simple people. The, the medicine from the village or the, the farmer on the countryside. It's just, tell me your story. I love the idea. Yes, yeah. maybe we can stall it. Yeah, Steal do it. it. <laughs> Everyone is worse to tell his story. Yeah. So <laughs> of course. You meet a lot of interesting people. Nice. Now I'm, oh, sorry, Heinz, continue, please. No, 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 you, you. I learned a lot from the children for my radio work, I guess, because the, the, the children in schools ask me very simple questions. Are you lucky? Why are you doing <laughs> this? When do you start it to, to love books? And now as a journalist, I stop to be very clever and to know everything. I come like a child. 
I asked them, are you happy? Was it the right way you done it? Had you should do something else? So it's, it helps me a lot to, to see how the children ask you. They usually ask, do you have a dog or a cat? Have you, have you yes. noticed that? that <laughs> I have five cats, so that's very good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they ask me, for example, why don't you go cut your hair? Yeah. <laughs> they ask me, you look strange. Or they ask me, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Things like this. Yeah. But they often ask, are you lucky? Are you a lucky man? It's a good question. Yeah, that's a strange yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and very um, hard to respond. <laughs> yeah, I no? always tell them I'm a lucky man because I have a loving family. I love, I live with books. I can meet interesting people. So I'm a rich man. Yeah. All poets, I'm, rich people. I'm, I'm thinking, Laura, about your, about your answer, no? Um, the, the songs that your father used to sing to you, how influenced on your work? Because when I read your books, I can listen to music, you know? So how, how do you think that this influenced your work? Yes, I'm, I like to think that it came from that songs in the darkness, but I, I couldn't, I'm not that sure it was only that. What I think is that all the material, um, that I brought all the material from childhood because it's always the same material that I write about. And, uh, and I guess when I say material, I'm being pretty literal because it's the materiality of the world that I, I've always noticed. Like I'm, I've always taken in the world through my senses, um, watching and listening and smelling and, also speaking and saying words aloud to try their materiality. So I guess that that singing and that reading aloud uh, from my father or from my parents has to have influenced the way I I write because it's I, I I'm not a musician. I don't know how to read music, but I. Yes, but I'm, but I'm listening to the music of words all the time and also to the music of the world. It's not just words. So <laughs> let's say the answer is yes. <laughs> I would like it to be yes. And in your case, Heinz, how these uh, childhood memories influence your work? To do it very much because I wrote some books about my childhood, books for adults and books for children. I wrote a book about my grandfather. I wrote a book about my grandmother. I did a book for adults about the smells of childhood. I made 70 oh. interviews with famous Austrian people and asked them about the smells of their childhood. I wrote a book uh, with love poems. It means Lobreden of Dinge means love love poems of things. Uh, I went in the, my, in the house of my childhood to my grandparents when they died and stayed for some weeks in the empty house and looked at all the things they have in the house, like the shoes, the hat of my grandfather, the, the stick he walked with, things like this. And I wrote to everything, I wrote a love poem, 70 love poems for, about things of my childhood. So I often go back to my childhood when I'm writing, even in the poems. And um, for me, music is, is very important too. I have a friend, he's a co composer, and he did, he did two CDs out of my poems. So it's, for me, it's nice to hear my poems as songs, and it works, so I'm happy about it. It comes together. Mm -hmm. And I have another question. When you are writing, you, you think uh, on, your on your readers? 
uh, you think on some topics, for example, you think, oh, this topic I prefer to not to write about it because it's too dark, because it's too sad, or it's no problem? That's a difficult question because uh, I start writing because I have a sentence or a, a, an idea of something and then I starting writing, I, I don't know if it's for eight or for 80 years, it's for seven or for 70 years. Writing a poem, I never know which age it could reach. I just write it and then I, I look how simple, how complicated is it. So often I start without thinking about this. But I do a lot of, I love to do picture books. So I know this are for little children too. And then I, I think very often about how much word do I need? What can I let open? What can the pictures tell? What have the words to tell? So it's, a, yeah, it's, it's like working as a, on a sculpture. So what can we leave? What can we what must stay, what must be there. But I don't know, sometimes I write for the, for the boy I was, sometimes I write for my daughter. It's difficult, it's difficult to say. I don't know how, how Laura thinks about it. Um, usually when I begin to write, it's writing for me was always a very intimate experience. It's, it's something that I do for myself and I never know what's going to come out of what I'm writing. Uh, and it's the same case. It, it, it usually begins with some spark, a combination of words or something I listen to. And uh, when I begin, I don't know what I'm doing exactly. And I, I'm alone, I'm in silence and I am, but once I've decided it's going to be, for instance, for children, I, I begin to think about the images too, about what the illustrator will be able to do with that. I know I don't know what he or she will be able to do because they are, they are magical for me. I would love to, to be able to, to draw, but I'm not. So I, sometimes I begin to think Usually what I do is to take out things, to leave space for the images. But in the first moment, I write as it comes and I put everything there and uh, except when it's some commission and when I've talked with the editors first and they've told me this is what we're thinking about and she is a person who's going to illustrate it so perhaps we have a meeting or now a Zoom meeting and uh, we talk about it. But if it's something that I'm doing by myself, um, I, I'm, I'm not thinking about the readers in the first place. It's the um, same. Yeah. No, Heinz, please. No, it's the same for me. And sometimes I wrote poems for me, for myself. And then someone was saying, wow, I can imagine to make pictures to your poem. So five or six of my picture books are poems at the beginning. And then the pictures are, come, are coming afterwards and it works as a picture book. But I didn't think it as a picture book. For me, it's just a poem. But it works with yes, 12 pictures. Lovely. And that's nice. That's a good way to make a picture book. Yes. It's great. I would like to interrupt all the time, but it, since we are in this sort of strange connection, I'm restraining myself. <laughs> <laughs> because everything you say, Heinz, makes me think of many things. But well, I hope someday we'll meet in person. Yeah, I hope. I hope so. <laughs> and how do you get new ideas? I don't want to say inspiration, but from where do you get new ideas? Uh, sometimes it's uh, from, from seeing something. When I'm in a school and I see a boy looking very sad and we try to write some stories uh, 
how do you feel today or what do you want to be or things like this and then he when i when i realize he feels like a very heavy thing like a big stone or something today i'm a stone when he writes things like this i want to write a story when i go home to make the stone fly or or smaller or or feel this the stones should should be feel better <laughs> after the story so sometimes it's just a sentence from a child or i see a boy sitting on a tree like the king of the of of the landscape i want to write a story about a king on a tree things like this it's something sometimes it's a picture it's a, a sentence like this or we have a play it's called any uh, many moon draus bist du we call it how you send people out of the game. So you, you point to someone and he has to leave, has to leave, has to leave, and one is staying. And I made the change. I want to bring them in, not out. So I made a poem about you come in. So with every rhyme, you come in and you come in into the circle, not you have to go out. And this became like a political statement. It means we don't send people away, we invite them to come in. That's the picture book, I have it here. On Du darfst rein, it's called, and you come in. So we have a circle. We have a circle here, like a game. You make a circle, you, you go in the middle, and then you make your poem, and with every rhyme, someone is coming in. So it's like a conclusion, and not to send away. So this story I wrote when I saw some people play this, sending away. Every, go away, go away, go away. I went home and wrote the story, come in, come in, come in. So like this. That's nice. You try to, to resolve, to solve problems through, yeah. through you the too. writing. <laughs> we solve small problems. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know, in my case, it's usually, I, I, something that is yes that i see that i listen to very close things like my the world around me i've written about my turtle i've written about the the birds that i see flying from my balcony um and many times i've written um from starting from something my daughter or my or my son said to me and it's not usually it's something that that they just said it's not some brilliant thought it's just some funny thing or even a i don't know an, an everyday thing it's it's always from very small things that somehow i feel connect to yes to some to some feeling of mine or a memory and it usually has to has to it's like something very small and 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 close but also some linguistic thing that happens there it has to be some sudden connection and then i i just go on i think sometimes we make a sort of pictures from the moments i feel mm -hmm. if there is a magic moment i want to to hold them by writing some words to to fix it maybe or to yeah. feel it again when i read it later it's like make pictures with the eye or with the heart i don't know exactly that's what i when i write for adults to what i always do it's like i i'm aware that this is gonna pass in a minute and i need to mm -hmm. fix it there so well one of the one of the uh, of the books I published in the last years is, is called Things, Things That I Wrote on a Notebook. And it's just that. It's a, a, a girl who is watching the world and taking notes, very, very brief notes about what happens around. Yes, yeah. and I, th I think it's almost always like that, as you said. And sometimes I think we write about the many the many sides we have inside. I, I wrote through books with poems for children and it's called uh, 
today I want to be slow, also to not to be fast all, all the time. One means how can I find luck and one means uh, I will give you something. So I think we, we try to find out what's inside of me, what, what parts do I have. Mm -hmm. Slow, heute will ich langsam sein, today I want to be slow, has many poems like today I want to hear all the noises, today I want to be silent, today I want to be alone, today I want to be with friends, so all the things that are possible with myself. And I know that children like it and they say, oh, I have a new story for you, today I want to climb on a tree, today I want to... Yeah. <laughs> There are so many possibilities of being. Of course, yes. That makes it so yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's interesting. And the poem about, <laughs> I love it, I read it for adults all the time because I love to read it for adults because they are so, so fast, they do so fast everything. And the poem is, today I want to be slow because my garden angel is still a child. He has to learn, he has to learn it to take care of me. So if I move slow, he better learn it. That's so, so nice. Like a angel school, he has to, to learn how to protect me. And when I'm running all the time, he can't do it. So we have to do everything slow. <laughs> that, that's, that's funny because I thought today, before we began this conversation, I thought today I want to speak slow. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's not always, it's, it's difficult for me. <laughs> well, to continue, um, I have a question about uh, children's poetry, at least in Argentina, I don't know the case in Austria. Children's poetry is usually in the second place respect to narrative books. You, you know, and I mean, scholar, uh, school, um, school program, there are exceptions, of course, but generally they, they, they are in the second place. So what do you think about um, um, reading uh, poetry during childhood? Uh, it's the same in Austria. If you go to a bookshop, you have to find to have to look very exactly to find some poetry somewhere in the last corner it's the same you have thriller and you have novels but where are the poems it's the same but i for me the poems were the, the start were very important when i when i read that read them as a child because i was so impressed that in a real book on a page there are only four lines and nothing else and that was enough so it was something and i wanted to know why it's written here just four lines why, why not more so i was reading them again and again and again until I, i felt why it's written like this so i think children can learn a lot by reading poems they have to think about it they have to continue the story in his head they have to find out what is the feeling of the writer so I love to go to schools and to read poems and to talk about it with the children. Why did I write it? Why are there only two lines? Why it is enough for me? How do you feel when you read it? I think it's a very good chance to, to make them inter interesting, to be interested in language. Why just eight words and that's enough? Yeah, I... I... I like very much what you what you are saying because usually um, here when when they finally accept to publish a po poetry for children, usually they ask you to tell a story in the poem. It's narrative poetry, yeah. and also when uh, they ask me to write poetry for textbooks for, for primary school. It's, it has to be a, prime, a, a narrative poem, uh, which I can do. But of course, if I can choose, I choose not to, not to do it because I love the, what you're saying. Like, 
why there are, uh, there are four lines or eight lines. What is the music here? What, why, why, what happens with the rest of the page too? Why there aren't words? Why, why, or why the lines are disposed in this particular form? And why this is a poem too? So it's, I think it's, it's I, I have no doubt that children can enjoy poetry and narrative and narrative poems and non-narrative poems because they are open to, to what they had before. So uh, it's, I think it's a, it's a question of, uh, of publishing houses mainly. <laughs> yes, and I think the books for children and especially the, poet, the poetry, uh, should be should be nice books, wonderful books, special books, not just something published. Yeah. They must be expensive in some way. How they are done with the paper, with everything. I love when they are special books. You are you are happy when you get it. It's not just something with poems. So it's a sort of that's a nice yeah. That's a nice idea too. It should be. But I, I, no, I'm, I was saying that I, I like that. I'm sure that children can appreciate the music of words. And uh, that's why I continue to write, uh, in, not always, but I love to do it with rhyme, with metric, yeah. with fixed metric or intertwined metric. But I think uh, that's something that children can appreciate more than publishers think, <laughs> I think and more so. than teachers think too. I have a, I have a, I have a game in, in schools in Germany. It's, it's easier to explain. I call it the word detective, detective like a policeman, because in, in one German word, you often have another word yeah. inside. You just mm -hmm. put away one, and it's another word. And with this trick, you can make very good rhymes. You just take away one Buchstabe, I don't know. As I, the word, Wort, of, in German, the word, Wort, has inside Ort, as a, in the word, is a place, and things like this. And sometimes we find about 150 words in one hour in school, and they get, they get to see how it works to, to make a rhyme or to make a rap or something. Because you, you start play with the words, with the, with the parts of the word. You can take out the first part and the second part is going to rhyme, right? Yeah. But they're All different the words, yeah. <coughs> Very nice. Yes, because so when I like think when you, when, sorry. We are like architects with words, we will build yeah. something. It's like to, uh, when you stop looking for the story that words are telling, you begin to say what story is inside of the word itself. And I think that's very, very funny. I don't know, maybe that's funny just for me, but. <laughs> for me too. <laughs> <laughs> we are too. <laughs> for example, in the word Europe, in, in Austria, Europa, Europe, is Europa in German. You yeah. find three words. There's the Euro is our money, Opa is the grandfather, and Ur Opa is the old grandfather. So it's just oh. one word. And when you start to play like this, the children get very interested, show me more words. So <laughs> get something well, special. Now that you mention it, in Spanish we have Europa, which is Europe, but also Europa Ropa, it's clothing. Yeah. So we have two there too. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to okay. play with words. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not afraid of words and I love it when they are not afraid. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. So now to continue, I would like to share a quote from Christine Nothlinger, the writer. Yeah. Christine Nothlinger. 
I'm sorry, how is the pronunciation? <laughs> Christine Nöstlinger. Oh, oh Christine. I've said it wrong all my life. <laughs> yes, I've me said too. Christine. <laughs> she, she was great. Christine Nöstlinger. Um, when she won the Hans Christian Andersen Award in 1984, she said, Science children live in an environment that does not encourage them to develop utopias for themselves, we must take them by the hand and show them how beautiful, happy, just, and humane this world could be. So, do you think you are capable to do this today? <laughs> yes, I think so, because we have to try anyway. But I think it goes in a, in a direction of um, making them stronger inside. To, to feel I have a talent, I have a music, I, I am a dancer, I'm a tiger, I don't know. Everyone has some, some power inside. And that's what I try to tell them with stories or poems. Uh, you can play football, you can write, you can dance, you can go, you, you can run. Everyone has something special. And so it's, it's good to make them stronger. And when you make people stronger, I think it, they will change something in a long way. That's a beautiful way to put it. And I, yeah, I agree. And I think I, as you were speaking, I thought that's what I, what I do as a mother in the first place. Sure. Uh, and uh, and that's I think with the books too. Yes, and then I do it through books. Yeah, it's it's similar in a way. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with Heinz and with Christina. <laughs> yeah. And I have one more question. You know, in oh. each edition of the festival, it has a topic. This year is transformation. The topic of the Filvita of the festival is transformation. So we are in, uh, in lockdown after over um, six months. No? Seven almost, yes. I seven, think it's almost seven. seven. Yeah. I don't know the case in Austria, no? but I'm, uh, I would like to, to ask you what comes next? How do you imagine the future? <laughs> Well, that's very difficult. I don't know. Uh, that's a very difficult question. It's the same in Austria. We have a lockdown and we're working at home most of the time. So we are not allowed to... How do you call if you take the other one like this and put in your arms? That's very uh, difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, for me, that's, that's a difficult thing. And I see it with my daughter. She's... She's worried about Corona and all the things. I don't know how to go on. I, I just do the same as I ever do. I write my stories, I write poems. I try to keep a sort of, I don't know, good vibration. The, I was saying that it's strange because what I, what I like to do happens mostly inside my house, reading and writing and I don't know, uh, but anyway, now it's, I miss the outside world. It's like the outside world, is, it's dangerous now. And that makes me not to enjoy so much what I do inside my house. I also miss uh, swimming because I, it was, I, I used to swim three times a week. And I miss the water very much, and I miss the sky and the trees. I mean, after all, what I write inside my home comes from what I see outside my home. So it's a very sad time for me. Even I, I try to do my best too, mainly because of my children, which are uh, teenagers, and I'm here behind that door trying to be silent today. But I, I don't know what to expect for the future. I, I'm not planning things, let's say. I'm, I'm planning things that I can do inside my home, 
but I hope, I don't know, I hope for the best. That's what I can do. <laughs> Today, a, a, music, a musician said uh, on, at the radio, you can do everything, you can break things and things like this, but you never can stop the music. So I was yeah. lucky about it. You never can stop literature, you cannot stop music, yes. you cannot stop loving people. So I think the good thing will go on in some yes. way. Yes, I think that too. And I have like in my, uh, within my house, I have like this little collection of loving things. And my, um, luckily my, my children play music, so that's a very nice thing to have here. And, and my, my son is playing the piano and my daughter plays the clarinet. So sometimes they play together and I try to sing. And that's what, what we're trying to do now. <laughs> uh, we have music and literature inside the house. And well, that's what, I, what, what, what we're doing now. <laughs> I love to I love to tell fairy tales, all the new fairy tales. And what I love the most in fairy tales is the change the change that is possible in every second. You go around the corner and you get a prince. You find the right word and you are something. I don't know. So I think everything is possible in a good way. So I think on this fairy tale sometimes. Yes. You're a little boy, but you're becoming a prince. You're a little girl, but becoming a princess. So everything is possible. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Or a frog. You can become a frog too. And that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that uh, it's time. So I don't know if you would like to say something else. I'm very happy to meet you at this way. It's, it's, a, it's, it's nice to see you this way. So we cannot travel at this moment, but maybe one day we can sit together on a table and have a coffee. Yes, and have a coffee. I was going to say the same thing <laughs> all together. I hope so. Be, yes. Be very I, nice. I... <laughs> we can give some books. We make some presents. I would love to. Yes, yes. I'm very yeah. happy to to be able to chat this way i used to say that i hate these kind of connections but after all it's it's a wonderful thing to have them sometimes not always but in this case i think it's wonderful to it's a sort of nearness anyway yeah yes yes so i want so, to thank you heinz and virginia and the filvita in general and the people who may be who may be watching us too yeah. yeah, I hope so. <laughs> if that happens, yeah. <laughs>